What up? And welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Uh, we're doing The Walking Dead still, and this is going to be the last time it's weekly. Sorry. It's hard to do these, especially with other issues that are happening behind the scenes on this fucking channel. And this is also a channel that I make through these videos on my spare time. So, yeah. Sorry, guys. So this is going to be the last one for a, a little bit. Anyway, this episode is titled Clear. And this is a actually surprisingly is a good episode. Originally, when I first saw this episode, I disliked it. And this is the second time I'm recording this episode because I forgot to turn on my mic. So I was talking, and I have beautiful video of me talking with nothing said. So it's going to be a little bit short. This episode's a bottled episode. It's separate from the main story we've been following, which is the governor and um, Woodbury uh, fighting with our group and the prison. So Rick and Carl and Michonne went off to go on a run. We didn't know where they were going, but we find out that they're going back to where Rick and Carl lived, which should be very far, but I guess somehow it's not that far. Um, so they get there. And on the way there, they basically require whatever. They're going around. They pass this guy. There's a hitchhiker. He's screaming for their help. They just go right by him. Okay. Then after that, they're driving. The highway is all blocked off, so they have to go in the grass, and they get stuck in uh, mud all the walkers start surrounding their vehicle and we just have to see how badass our crew is and they're like rick and michonne look at each other they're just calm no problem whatsoever and then rick looks at carl michonne and he's like cover your ears so michonne just closes her ears she never turns and looks at rick <laughs> and carl's looking at rick and he closes his ears and then rick lowers the window a little puts his gun out and then the cut to all the walkers are dead so uh, then they start taking things that they could put under the tire to get out. And then we see the hitchhiker screaming again to run, to, uh, asking for help. They get the car out. They just leave him there. The guy's screaming for their help the entire time. It's like, this guy's attracting walkers to him too. And plus, they don't know if he's trying to set up a trap, if there's people behind him or what's going on. So I understand that much. Well, he could probably try it. It's just a trap, most likely, in, his, in their mind. Um, they end up going to the locker, the storage locker of the police station that Rick was the sheriff at, and all the weapons that he showed Morgan in the first episode are all gone. So he's like, oh, they must have raided this place, but Rick knows places where he signed permits for people to have guns, and nobody else would know they had guns behind their counter and businesses and places. So they decide to go back into town, and that's where Rick sees, like, the town is, like, taken over by somebody that set up booby traps everywhere. And it's there's some there's a crazy person because they wrote clear everywhere. That's all you see is clear, 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 clear. So I think there was something else written too, but on the wall somewhere that Rick was looking at. But I really didn't pay attention to that part. Um, so all of a sudden they're walking through this maze of traps, and they're like, "Don't worry." The walkers start coming towards them. They're like, "Don't worry, don't bother," because they, they're gonna get trapped. These are these are traps, like. Rick realizes because you don't know what it is. It's just all these bamboo sticks and spears and and things all over the place, and traps with with uh, animals or rats or whatever. So they walk through, and all of a sudden they start getting shot at. And there's a guy on top of the roof. He's got a what what a helmet on. I would call it level three helmet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, PUBG, yeah, he's got a, a level three helmet on. He's got a rifle. He's shooting at. Well, he's sh he shot it like a warning shot, and he says, "Put your hands up in the air, throw your guns, and leave." All right. And Michelle's like, "We need that gun." So Rick starts firing. Carl's supposed to go hide somewhere. Michelle's gonna go up and try to get that gun from that guy. Badasses. Our crew are badasses. So. Uh, the guy, uh, the guy still keeps shooting at Rick. Rick goes around the maze. All of a sudden, Michonne's on the roof, and she's like, he's gone. Where is he? And he's at, down the ground floor again on the street shooting at Rick. All of a sudden, the guy's about to approach Rick, and Carl pops out, shoots him in the chest. The guy passes out. Rick looks at Carl, and he's like, I told you to hide. And then this is Chandler Rick's bad acting. Carl's like, I had to. I don't know. He always does this thing. I don't know what that's about. But um, anyway... Rick goes, I want to see who this guy is. Michonne's like, do we care? And it reveals that it's Morgan. So he's like, yeah, we do. And I think that's when the episode start. Oh, it was a commercial. So basically, this bottled episode, separate from everything, is just reuniting Morgan and Rick together. And we're getting to see what, how Rick is, in the same sense, Rick is seeing how he can end up if he keeps seeing what he sees. You see, like... Morgan lost everything. His wife died before the world fall, fell. Well, no, the world, the world fell. His wife died. He lost his wife. He had his son. Then 
Rick told him, come with me, I have to look for my wife, or uh, here's a walkie, we'll talk, I'll try to keep you updated, if I find my wife or anything, uh, I'll let you know what places to go to, what not to, I'm going to turn it on every day at this time until you want to come, and I'm going to tell you, and Rick did that, Rick did his his part, um, after we saw Morgan that last time, he's a totally different person, he's crazy because he lost his son, He's because he didn't kill his wife, he saw his wife while he was downstairs trying to get something one day in the cellar. He came back up and he saw his son holding the gun against his wife. He tried to get his wife's attention or his son's attention. I don't know. And I think it was his wife's attention. He screamed at her name, but she didn't respond to him. And the son turned and she attacked him. And she said, all I saw was red. All I saw was red everywhere. And then he finally killed his wife when it was too late because he remembers that Rick gave him the rifle to, you know, protect himself and kill his wife maybe and Ms. Morgan feels responsible for his son's death which he kind of is he should have left with Rick but he didn't he was trying to build up the courage to kill his wife he felt like he couldn't leave until he killed her and he couldn't do it yet I thought he did in the first episode but I may be remembering it wrong because I haven't seen it in a while so it's fucked up and Rick is seeing that after losing his kid, he's gone crazy. And we don't know all the shit he went through, if people robbed him and stole from him, and because he makes references to things later that you go, that could happen to him, even though it is what they're doing to him at this particular moment, and what another guru's gonna do. It was just very good wording. I didn't see who, who wrote this episode, but I liked it. I actually like this episode a lot more now than I did the original first time I saw it. It explains a lot more, or at least I'm seeing it, and I'm like, oh shit, like, that's what Rick is seeing he could be this if he keeps losing it because he's losing it. He sees his wife, he sees Shane, he's going crazy, right? So he sees what he could turn into if he doesn't like get a hold of himself and he doesn't, you know, he could lose himself. And Morgan's lost himself. And Rick offers to like for Morgan to join him now because Morgan, you know, it's a, it's a lot of stuff Morgan talks about that we see he didn't know it was rick then he realized it was rick when rick uh, showed him the walkie then he said you said you were going to talk every day and rick said i did and he goes no you didn't when i turned it on you weren't there and he's like i got too far away which is true like the signal was too far he couldn't reach him so uh rick feels guilty in a sense but you know it's all fucked at the same time this story is happening we do get another story but it's with michonne and carl and basically carl's like i want to go get judith a crib because i think she should have a crib growing up you know there's a store right around the corner that's what he tells car uh rick but really what he wants to do is go get a picture of him his mother and his dad that's the last picture because Lori did have pictures but shit got lost in the fire when they had to leave the farm because they whatever was in their truck or the truck maybe I, don't, I think it was the farm that's the last place they had it so they don't have it anymore um so michonne's like she's interested to see carl after he shot this guy she's like this kid's a badass so she's like i want to you know i want to get to know this kid a little better so she's like i'll go i'll go with you you know and then she's like i told you that i go with you but he's like no i gotta do this on my own so he's kind of being annoying and he's always uh, uh. so but finally he goes, there's a cool scene in the restaurant where the picture is that uh, all these walkers come out and they surround Carl and uh, Michonne. They have to get around it and away and they escape, but Carl dropped the picture. So then Carl's like, I'm going back in, I'm going back in. And she's like, enough, enough with the bullshit. I'll do it, wait here. And then she goes around and like two minutes later or a minute later, she comes back and she's like, she gives him the picture and he's like, I thought it be nice if she knew what her mother looked like if my sister judith knew what her mother looked like and then uh, uh and then michonne uh, smiled and then they went and they got the crib and as they were leaving they saw morgan and michonne's like he's okay and rick's like no and then um carl says hey morgan and morgan looks at him and he goes uh you know i had to shoot you right like i had to i'm sorry and then Carl, Morgan's like, hey, kid, never apologize. Like, you did the right thing. You were supposed to. Don't don't feel bad about it afterwards. So uh, that was good. And then uh, Carl kind of says to Rick, like, Michonne's one of us. And he's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, like, he doesn't say anything else. I think he says something else, but I forgot what it was. But he's basically telling his dad, she's one of the good ones. She belongs a part of our group. She could stay. Like, he's telling her, like, she's a good one. And then he's like, he looked at him like, damn, this kid's already making, like, he's a, he's grown up a lot and he's making decisions and I don't know. But that was cute because after that, he's looking around 
and Michonne's loading the car and she goes, you see something? And then Rick looks at her like, she goes, it's okay, I know you see things. She goes, I used to see things too. I used to talk to my dead boyfriend. And then Rick looks at her and he's like, you know, he doesn't say anything and then he goes, you wanna drive back home? And she's like, sure. And he goes, cause I see things. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then he went in to, he could get rest. He needs the rest. So, uh, but although she drove on the way there, so, uh, and then, but he was stabbed. Morgan did stab him, so he's probably exhausted. But uh, and they took a lot of guns. Morgan had like a lot of artillery. And when he did offer Morgan to come, Morgan's like, well, "You're taking a lot of guns, buddy. If this place is so protected, why are you taking all this stuff?" So he lets him know that we're gonna that they're, they're in a war, and he's like, "We're gonna win." And he's like, "There's no winning and losing. Everyone loses." Anyway, they left, and as they're leaving, the good music plays. Last week was shit music. This week was good music. And they see all these body parts on the road, and all of a sudden they, see, they pass the bag of that hitchhiker from earlier. It was like, oh, fuck. And then the car goes in reverse, it picks up the bag, and it drives off. I like this episode a lot more than the first time when I saw it. I don't know why. For now, I like it more. I don't know who wrote this episode, but I do. I really do like this episode. I think it's a really good episode. But anyway, let me know in the comment section what you thought about this episode. Um, yeah, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.